Go ahead, Dr. Sohail. Okay, thank you very much, um, Angela, and thank you very much all the team in the Seattle Science Foundation uh, for giving me opportunity. In fact, not giving me opportunity, giving my uh, colleagues and Pakistan uh, to host this um, uh, symposium and uh, a general club meeting uh, while uh, in Lahore and uh, all my colleagues, they are going to present the papers and uh, then we'll have a discussion. I thank uh, Jens Chapman, who is uh, in Prague. I hope he's having a good time there. It's a wonderful city there and uh, we miss him. I'm sure he will join there. And I thank all my colleagues in um, Seattle Science Foundation. And without delay, I'll um, give you a brief introduction of the topic. What we are going to discuss is various problems in uh, tuberculosis spine, uh, which uh, as you know, um, is, is not uncommon. We have still uh, tuberculosis, which is uh, still there despite vaccination, et cetera. And uh, we have still a problem, a plethora of the problem of spinal tuberculosis for various reasons, which are mainly socioeconomic and maybe to a certain extent, um, the um, uh, malnutrition and uh, poor hygienic conditions. I don't think so. We have significant um, input uh, from the HIV infection or other disorders, uh, immune disorders. But nevertheless, TB spine and the tuberculosis pulmonary um, sort of uh, is still there. And uh, we have to deal with various uh, kind of uh, problem from the early childhood uh, to the late and also people presenting with the late various kind of deformities or neurological uh, uh, problems. And um, Without any um, delay, I would request uh, my, we have request um, Dr. Hamad and Dr. Ayaz Khan and Dr. Mahmoud Ahmad and uh, Dr. Shakil. They are going to present a paper which will highlight their uh, sort of um, problems and how these issues, they are uh, present in the rest of the world and uh, how they uh, tackle that problem. They will be discussed uh, subsequent to that presentation uh, of their, um, you know, various uh, clinical uh, scenario. So uh, I request Dr. Hamas Sadiq uh, to uh, present first article and uh, then go on from there uh, to the discussion. He is going to discuss uh, vertebral destruction in a 11 month old child, which highlights mainly um, tuberculosis infection in a in a childhood uh, scenario, which is very, very difficult situation to manage because of the age, because of the uh, uh, extent of the disease and because of the uh, growing um, sort of uh, uh, spine, uh, which increases the deformity to a certain extent. So I think um, it has a different uh, scenario and ball game altogether as compared to infection in adults, which is much more uh, sort of um, understandable and predictable. But uh, in children, it is not very predictable. It is uh, not very uh, sort of, um, you know, easy to handle. Uh, from the surgical and from the medical uh, point of view. So without delay, I'll uh, request Dr. Hamid uh, to come forward and uh, present uh, his uh, case and uh, article. Hi, everyone. I am Dr. Mohammed Siddiq, Hamid Consultant, Orthopedic and Spine Surgeon, Lahore General Hospital, Lahore. First of all, I am thankful to my mentors, Professor Tariq Suhail and Professor Hanil, and organizer of the Seattle Science Foundation for giving me the opportunity to participate actively in this session. Today, I will discuss the carry spine in pediatric age group. Stages of carry spine regarding the progression of disease. There are four stages, stages of infection, stage of destruction, stage of deformity, and the stage of healing. Stage of infection is an earlier stage. Infection spread hematologically is usually involved anterior paradiscal part of the body. Difficult to diagnose early. Stage of destruction. As infection progresses, destruction of vertebral bodies takes place. State of deformity, due to collapse of the vertebral bodies, anteriorly, there is a kyphotic deformity with gibbous formation. Deformity progresses in pediatric patients, depending upon the remaining skeletal growth. More deformity if more remaining growth. State of healing. Bony ankylosis and show with or without deformity if anti-tuberculosis treatment started. Today, I will discuss the vertebral destruction in an 11 month old children with the spinal tuberculosis, a case report and the review of the literature. 
This article shows the spinal tuberculosis occur mostly in children and young adults. The tuberculous spine DNA in children in children cases more destruction as most of the vertebral bodies are cartilaginous. The treatment targets are to confirm the diagnosis, eradicate the infection, achieve a decompression of the spinal canal material, and correct or prevent the spinal deformity and possible squeezing. In a study carried out in a Mexican population, all the patients with post disease presented a deformity of the spine, spinal cord at the time of the diagnosis, with an average time of the diagnosis of eight months, with a range of one to 48 months. Similarly, a UK cohort reported a median duration of symptoms before the diagnosis of seven months, whereas the Taiwan cohort reported a median time of two months. Our patient presented neurological deficit and or deformity at the time of diagnosis. Prevalence of these symptoms have been observed more than two-fold times in developing countries. This is probably because of the lack of education of this syndrome around the population, as well as low economic resources that restrict the access to specialized studies for their diagnosis. In order to get better outcome, in the developing country, it is necessary to promote the dissemination of information in the population. It should be clarified that in Mexico since 1951 and in our setup, the BCG vaccine is part of the vaccine, vaccination scheme, which is applied at birth, not record dose. The base of the treatment is the anti-tuberculosis medicine suggested for 12 months, starting during the first two months and in uh, intensive phase with Isoniazide, Rivampicin, Parazinamide, and the Thambitol. Subsequently, a subsequent phase for the remaining 10 months based on the Isoniazide and Rivampicin at the same previous dose. The destruction of the vertebral body and palate combined with the continuation of the growth in the spine can cause deformity to progress. In 40%, the kyphosis worsens, 40% improve, and in 20% stays constant. Surgery is indicated for complications which such as deformity, neurological deficit, instability, huge abscess diagnostic dilemma. It should be noted that the growth potential is also disturbed when the disease focus is surgical, surgically approached. At the decompression of the spinal cord, the apophysial ring is partially or completely damaged. Consequently, the growth potential is partially or totally affected. This suggests that posterior elements do contribute to growth and as far as possible anterior, radi anterior radical resection should be avoided in children. Now, I want to discuss my case. The, a three years male presented to me, previously diagnosed as a case of pulmonary tuberculosis and started anti-tuberculosis treatment by pediatrician six months ago. After one month, her mother noticed deformity at upper thoracic region along with complete paraplegia. Radiological and hematological investigation revealed spinal tuberculosis as D56 level with complete paraplegia below that level. Radiograph shows spine toppling signs, heteropulse, bony fragments, and the facet joints opening and gibbous formation at D56 and D7 level. MRI shows the cord compression. Antilateral decompression done with fibular strut graft placed anteriorly and transpartical screw fixation done posteriorly from D3 to D1, uh, D8, sorry, with continuation of the ATT. After one month, he was able to move his legs and mobilize with cervical thoracic orthosis. It's a post op radiographs. It's a video. Sorry. Due to some technical error, we can't play the video. Follow up after six months, the patient present with the impingement of the uh, implant, is, that is the implant failure, it's the proximal screw pull out and distal screw is the low screen. Now, it's open for discussion for further management. Sir. Gentlemen, this is uh, this is Izzy Lieberman from the Texas Pack Institute. 
Uh, interesting case with the, the three-year-old uh, child. And what I'd like to know is, did you revise the screw pullout at the top? Uh, have you assessed the fusion since? What, what's your plan for this individual from this point on? I think uh, um, to me, uh, it's uh, not healed as yet. I would um, go and uh, revise the posterior instrumentation. But again, um, uh, since uh, if it's a if it's a united, um, you know, the, the DNA is healed, disease is healed, the posterior complex will keep on growing. That's the one reason for increased kyphosis and uh, probably pull out. Second is all these kids, they have a poor bone stock. Their bone is already very soft, and along with the inflammatory disease, this further um, increases the osteoporotic and uh, the uh, implant failure or being pulled out uh, is uh, one of the issues uh, which are there. So I think um, I, I would uh, assess the state of union. And then uh, if it is still, it's not fully united or not fully fused entirely, I would go and uh, instrument it again at a more proximal and more distal level so that mechanically it's much more uh, um, balanced and uh, also uh, provides, uh, uh, you know, uh, much more uh, stability till the child uh, grows out and uh, defines itself, whether it's a kyphosis is going to go worse or it's going to correct itself, as uh, he's already mentioned, that um, quite a number of patients, uh, uh, they uh, sort of, uh, they grow out to, into normal, provided their uh, um, uh, ring apophysis is not damaged uh, by the disease process or by the surgical endeavor. But if it's uh, intact and it still gives potential, it may um, come back to normal, uh, not near normal, but uh, near normal growth with the uh, passive time. But if there is a cessation of uh, uh, growth potential in that apophysis, then uh, it might remain static and uh, does not grow in that situation. It will uh, go into further kyphosis and one can uh, anticipate that over the period of time with a regular follow-up. In the meantime, we'll continue with the uh, antitubercular treatment with the help of a pediatrician who will determine the dose and the child has to be uh, followed up, uh, both radiologically and also uh, from hematological uh, infective parameters. Fair enough. Do you feel that there's any role for bracing in this case? I think it is a little high. If you put a brace there, it uh, may or may not help, but if you uh, wish to brace it, then you have to uh, put cervical and then you have to support the chain so that uh, the proximal thoracic spine uh, uh, or the uh, proximal, uh, the uh, you know, cervical spine and the head does not not uh, add to the biomechanical imbalance uh, uh, in the face of kyphosis in the upper uh, thoracic area. But again, I don't think so. There's any uh, problem in putting a brace and the brace has to be kind of modified Milwaukee and uh, it, since this is only for uh, six months or uh, nine months or one year, it, sh it will not produce any secondary um, adverse uh, effects, uh, what you see with a Milwaukee kind of uh, brace. And, and I apologize if I may have missed it, but the technical details of doing the anterior corpectomy, how did you access that? Was that a costal vertebral approach or was that a uh, transthoracic approach? Well, I think uh, uh, what they did is uh, they did um, a kind of um, uh, anterolateral uh, approach to the thoracotomy. Um, this is uh, uh, this is what they did, but if I have to do myself, probably I will not open up the uh, chest cavity because the chest cavity in uh, this child, which is already known uh, anti tuberculosis you know, uh, treatment uh, under pediatrician with a pulmonary tuberculosis, I would have stayed away from the cavity and should have approached the extra cavity approach, which gives a good access to the <coughs> vertebral body. You can do uh, debrima, you can um, decompress the um, uh, spinal cord, and you can put a bone gap. Bone gap in a child is a very difficult issue because uh, if you use rib, rib is not strong enough, even though it... Uh, by the age of one or one and a half, it gains a good size, but again, the cut ends, they remain sharp. And if there's any deformity there and it's not protected, it may dislodge itself and uh, cause uh, uh, damage to the cord with the sharp ends on the other side of the um, cut rib. I will use a rib. I will take the rib and uh, put in a, a sort of um, 
unabsorbable or absorbable sutures uh, as a log of wood and put two, three um, uh, logs of uh, fibular uh, strut and uh, put them in the place of, um, uh, you know, where the corpectomy has been carried out. But during corpectomy, what I would do is I will not aggressively uh, curatize the uh, upper or the lower end of the uh, vertebral bodies because they are the growth areas. And if you disrupt them, um, you know, they're already maybe disrupted. But if you disrupt them surgically by putting aggressive uh, um, uh, curatage or uh, debrima, then you might add to the atrogenic damage to the already uh, damage which has already uh, have been because of uh, disease process itself. So I think uh, um, you just remove the pus, remove any necrotic tissue, the sequestrum has to be removed, decompress the cord, and put a bone gap. At the same time, put a, a 3.5 um, cervical spine, um, you know, pedicle screws there in the back and just protect it. And I think uh, it should be, um, you know, two or three level above and below. And since child is growing, I would advise very strongly, and I, this is in my practice, that I remove the uh, uh, implants after one year, once the healing has taken place and child is neurologically um, improved and uh, ambulant. Because if you remain, the, if you keep these uh, is implants there, it might interfere into the growth of the spine uh, and it will interfere uh, in the uh, vertebral growth, at, at least uh, in the level which has been instrumented. Thank you. This is Jack Ziegler at Texas Back. Just a, a follow-up question. Do you fuse across the same levels posteriorly uh, to prevent overgrowth, you know, crankshaft of the, the posterior elements? Um, I think um, they, if the child is too young and if there's a already healing has taken place, that healed segment of the uh, vertebral body will uh, act as a tether anteriorly. And if the posterior um, structures, they keep on growing, they will add to the kyphotic deformity. In yes, in those situations, I will put a bone gap in the back, and um, uh, you know, uh, block create a kind of block vertebrae at that level, so that the anterior and the posterior vertebral uh, column they grow in a kind of unison ma manner, and they do not produce any further aggravation or deformity with the growth. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Hamid. Now I request uh, Dr. Ayaz, who is represented by Dr. Kasser, and he's going to talk about uh, carry spine, uh, um, in particular in the cervical spine, and uh, which is uh, sort of uh, not uncommon uh, uh, scenario in our setup. So I think um, Dr. Ayaz is going to present case and uh, review the uh, paper uh, in his talk. Uh, Dr. Kasser? Uh, uh, yes, sir. I'm Dr. Kesar and I will present on behalf of uh, Professor Mohammed Ayaz Khan, my mentor. Uh, this uh, uh, article was a meta-analysis which, uh, which uh, they discussed the current concept in management of cervical spine disease, uh, tuberculosis disease. Uh, this was the article which was uh, published in 2021. Uh, uh, as a cervical spine uh, tuberculosis disease is a uh, rare disease. Uh, it, uh, it is approximately 1% of uh, total TB bur burden and, and about 35% of all spinal diseases. And there are more uh, uh, chance, greater uh, chances of uh, neurological deterioration, instability, and progressive malalignment in cervical tuberculosis disease. It is uh, a rare pathology. It is divided into atlantic uh, axial TB and sub axial TB. And uh, the literature evidence was uh, quite uh, uh, scarce, and uh, the majority of the issues about cervical tuberculosis disease were controversial. This uh, meta analysis uh, comprehensively uh, discussed the various uh, uh, aspects of, in, the uh, uh, in the literature about uh, diagnosis treatment uh, of patient with cervical spine disease, uh, cervical tuberculosis disease. Uh, a thorough literature source was, search was done on PubMed and uh, Google databases. Uh, a total of 178 related articles were uh, isolated, and uh, uh, in this study, 41 articles were included, which were which were re review articles, RCTs, and level, level one uh, studies. The uh, upper cervical spine disease involved uh, C1 and C2 uh, vertebrae, which is uh, uh, labeled as atlantic axial disease, and it institutes about 0.3 to 1% of all spinal TB. 
and the sub AGLTP uh, constitute about uh, 3% or less than 3% of spinal TB. Though the mortality rate has reduced uh, due to modern uh, regimes uh, from 10% to 3%, but there are still high chances of deformity and paraphrases, which are uh, around uh, 15 to 30%. The common clinical features uh, in uh, uh, spinal tuberculosis disease, as you all know, is uh, uh, constitutional symptoms, neurological deficit, and deformity. In, uh, in cervical uh, tubercular disease, the axial pain is about 87%. Radicular, and neck, radicular pain and neck mobility uh, uh, is also about uh, uh, about 80%. And the uh, most common, 94%. Uh, and uh, uh, these are the most uh, common presenting symptoms in sub axial cervical TB. In Atlanta axial uh, disease, in the latter stages, there, there are severe restriction of nip movements and uh, torticular skin and so on. And 70% uh, of, of the patient with cervical, uh, with spinal TB may present with four lapses. The prevalence is uh, quite high. Uh, the prevalence of neurological com compromise is quite high in uh, uh, cervical spine disease uh, as compared to the rest of the spine. And uh, there are uh, even more chances of uh, neurological deficit in uh, uh, adults and elderly patients. The chances of kyphosis development are less as compared to uh, th thoracic uh, or thoracolumbar TBA because the weight bearing, uh, uh, mainly the cervical TB is uh, anterior disease and the weight bearing line is uh, mainly posterior. That's why the chances of kyphosis are less as compared to uh, thoracic and thoracolumbar diseases. The diagnosis uh, is three pronged uh, mainly on the uh, lab investigations, uh, imaging, and histopathology. The lab investigation include the uh, TLC count, which is raised, uh, ESR and CFP are also raised, are raised in about three, three third, or two third of the patient. And uh, ESR and CRP, CRP are also for a significant uh, uh, prognostic utility as well. And uh, NFTs are important because most of the uh, antibiotics drugs are hepatotoxic. There, then there are some immunological tests which, which were uh, uh, assist in these uh, meta-analysis and uh, they found that uh, they are also helpful in diagnosing the uh, cervical spine uh, team. Plain radiographs are initially normal in uh, about three to four weeks they are normal, but later on there, there may be a displaced nerving, radiac lesion, enhanced vertebral radiolucency and topotic collapse. Uh, CT is also important for uh, uh, to demonstrate bony lesions and uh, lesions which are smaller than 1.5 uh, centimeter. Uh, MRI is a gold standard for diagnosing uh, spinal TB, uh, having sensitivity and specificity of 93 to 96 percent, respectively. And uh, it is also of prognostic uh, utility, utility as well. And also the MRI can. Uh, uh, Tell, about, uh, tell us about the status of the card in patients with uh, card compromise and uh, neurological deficit. And also, MRI is important to evaluate and to know about the skip lesion and to screen the uh, rest of the spine. This is an uh, MRI uh, sag uh, uh, sagittal and axial section, which shows uh, the features of an active disease uh, having interior uh, collection and posteriorly card compromise. The C and D picture shows uh, the heel disease uh, in which uh, there is some patency in the canal. Tissue sampling is uh, very important and uh, they can be uh, procured either surgically or percutaneously under microscopic uh, image uh, uh, or CT guidance. And uh, all these uh, uh, tissues should be uh, uh, like uh, uh, polymerized chain reaction and PCR should be done, pyogenic bacterial culture should be done, tubercular culture and histopathological examination of these uh, tissues is important. Plus in this, in this meta-analysis, uh, some studies shows that the tubercular culture is the gold standard uh, confirmatory, uh, confirmatory test, uh, but other uh, studies uh, show that histopathology, uh, histopathology uh, pathological examination is uh, more superior to uh, to the other uh, test and uh, tubercular culture. The principles of uh, management uh, cervical TB is uh, mainly a, a medical disease. 
Uh, and chemotherapy is the common stone of uh, treatment. The first first line drugs, as you all know, is uh, recompensing the thimbutol, parazinamide, and uh, uh, the WHO guidelines are they have divided the treatment, medical treatment, into intensive phase, which includes four drugs for two to three months, and continuation phase, which includes two to three drugs for uh, seven to nine or ten months. Some sort of uh, external uh, immobilization is important. And uh, there are different methods of external uh, immobilization, but uh, the effectiveness of external Im immobilization is uh, uh, mainly uh, dependent on three factors, which are compliance to, uh, to this uh, external immobilization, age of the patient, and NIC mo mobility while getting this uh, uh, collar or any sort of uh, immobilization. The general re recommendations were that there should be rigid orthosis and avoidance of all activities involving neck movements and weight bearing for uh, greater than three months or until there is, uh, there is a definitive radiological uh, evidence of healing. Uh, monitoring the response to anti-tuberculous drugs is also important, and uh, this uh, is mainly clinical or uh, lab investigation like ESR, CRP should be followed, and uh, uh, radiological evidence of healing should also be present to know about the uh, uh, response to anti-tuberculous drugs. Uh, also, MRI is a very useful modality for assessing the response to uh, med uh, medical treatment. And, and the MRI and the MRI T1 weighted images will show increase in intensity, signal intensity within the vertebral marrow. And uh, the T2 weighted uh, images will show complete resolution of granulation tissue and phosphorylation. Yes, sir. Can indication? You, uh, can you uh, go on and tell us about your uh, uh, patient, uh, uh, you know, case which uh, you want to present. Uh, Sir, I put a case in the uh, in the last, but uh, I will show it in the last. There, there, there was an uneventful case. We did uh, anterior carpectomy cage fixation in a patient, uh, seventy year old, and uh, he uh, he, uh, he had a good uh, result. Uh, I will present it in the last. Uh, how long is it? Uh, we are running short of time. Uh, it, it's about two three slides. Now. Okay, okay, carry on. Huh? The surgical indications are mainly obtaining uh, tissue samples, spinal decompression, and debridement and stabilization of the spine. Uh, this is uh, uh, again another slide showing surgical indication of uh, uh, cervical spine disease. Then some uh, a few points about atlantoaxial and subaxial uh, disease. The besides MRI and CT scan, the uh, X-rays which were important are open mouth views, AP and lateral views. That will show uh, some increase uh, in Atlanto dense interval, which is greater than 3 mm in adults and greater than 5 mm uh, in children uh, are important. And surgical indications are uh, uh, more extensive radiological destruction, uh, bony destruction, and significant uh, neuro deficit. Uh, these patients will benefit from surgery. Uh, goal and uh, recommended conservative treatment there are different stages, uh, three stages of uh, Atlanto axial disease, and they uh, recommended uh, conservative treatment in stage one and two disease and surgery in grade three disease. Surgical approaches in uh, Atlanto axial disease mainly it is uh, posterior with the uh, occipital cervical fusion or uh, Atlanto axial fusion. And uh, a few points about uh, they have discussed about sub axial cervical disease. Uh, uh, plain radiographs are important, which show cervical alignment and uh, uh, also. Uh, the, the mainly there are two segment involvement. Uh, involvement is a co common pattern. C5 is the most common level, and uh, that is followed by C6 level. Surgical indications are C2, C2 to C7 lobus is greater than zero degree, uh, or C2 to C7 sagittal vertical axis greater than four centimeter. These patients have high chances of kyphosis development, and uh, they, they would benefit from anterior cervical. Uh, reconstruction. Surgical approaches in these patients is mainly interior, but we can aid uh, posterior uh, approach if there is multiple, uh, if there is a, there is need of uh, multiple greater than two level car carpectomy or there is a junction level or long segment of the cerv cervical spine is involved. And uh, uh, they have uh, 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 there are some protocol about these as well. In uh, grade one, there is a conservative treatment. Uh, grade two, there is an interior debridement and uh, fusion, while in grade three disease, combined interior and posterior approaches are done. 
clinical outcome is very favorable and the response to uh, antitubercular drugs uh, should be evident in three weeks. And they all eventually uh, heal by fibrous union, uh, uh, which leads to uh, ossification and stabilization. And uh, the available evidence in this meta is showed a uh, favorable outcome in both conservatively and sur surgically managed patients. Conclusion uh, of this meta-analysis was, was that atlantoaxial and subaxial tuberculous disease constitute 0.3 to 1% and 3% of the spinal uh, TB. Respectively, the incidence of uh, neuro, neuro deficit in cervical tuberculous disease is significantly higher than uh, other spinal uh, TB. The general principles of management is uh, similar to uh, spinal TB elsewhere and uh, medical therapy remains the common stone surgery is indicated in uh, specific scenarios where there is gross neurological deficit, later stages of uh, disease, or there is a uh, disruption, bony or ligamentous uh, disruption. And uh, uh, altered surgical balance as well, or there is poor response to drugs. The surgical approaches in, in atlantoaxial disease is uh, mainly posterior lawn, while in subaxial disease, it is mainly uh, in interior. Uh, approach which is uh, more useful, though we can go posteriorly as well uh, if there's a uh, multi segment involvement. And the overall uh, outcome is uh, favorable. Thank you. Thank you uh, I will share sir. another. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank you. Sir. I think uh, it's a very, very, very good um, uh, presentation, um, uh, especially the analysis. And I think from the technical point of view, uh, if we divide the cervical spine into a clantoaxial uh, junction or subaxial, uh, uh, and then is a subaxial spine, and then is a third is a, a cervical thoracic junction. The occipital cervical junction is uh, is an entirely different joint because they are mainly stabilized not by the bone itself. The bones are shallow. They are not very, they are mobile, but they are not very stable uh, in face of uh, any infection or any other injury. And any infection which occurs either because of uh, tuberculosis or because of uh, sore throat and uh, joining a hyperemia and producing a laxity, it produces instability there. And this instability in tuberculosis or any other infection occurs very early on in the disease process. And when you, you can pick up uh, these patients quickly because they have upper motor neuron signs uh, very early on when there's just a minor instability and there's a minor laxity and there's instability of the joint or maybe there's an abscess formation. In those, I think uh, MRI is very important investigation. It gives you the localization of the abscess or any other inflammatory process and it also gives you uh, the state of uh, neurological uh, elements and you can treat uh, uh, you know, very early on before uh, the disease advanced with the instability and with the kyphotic deformity and with the bone destruction. In all this, I think the essence is you have to stabilize and the stabilization better is from the back, occipital cervical junction, depending on the extent of the lesion one can institute and one can carry on the treatment uh, as appropriate uh, in those areas. Subaxial is the same, which has already been mentioned. Any, any tuberculosis, uh, in the, uh, it is similar in principle, similar in its uh, uh, presentation with a uh, loss of um, a bone and destruction and kyphotic deformation. One has to identify it. One has to do it again uh, with the examination of uh, you know, X-rays and uh, CT or MR. And um, one can stabilize it. One should stabilize it. Otherwise, uh, healed kyphosis deformity in the cervical spine it produces neurological um, uh, damage because of the stretching of the cord over the uh, kyphotic uh, area. And also the approach becomes more uh, difficult because everything becomes uh, sort of uh, glued together in uh, um, sequelae of uh, you know, infection and all of those sort of things. So I think if you have to go, if there's indication that they, you have to go inside, go early on, you can easily uh, uh, remove the infection and stabilize the spine putting a um, plate or uh, other, uh, you know, bony material like fibula or any press <coughs> cortical graft, you can reconstruct the anterior column. Then the so uh, cervical thoracic junction is entirely different. Uh, it is because of a technical issue that you have to approach the, um, you know, area which is uh, sort of uh, transitional from the cervical to the thoracic. There are a lot of um, big vessels they are going in, and they sometimes with a short neck and in a fatty patient, uh, the approach becomes even more technically difficult and can, uh, in those situations, I think uh, cosplay transectomy 
Uh, and the high thoracotomy economy at the right side is much safer, much more uh, sort of uh, gives you uh, an idea of, um, of uh, correction of deformity. And if there are more than two vertebrae, then I think uh, the posterior instrumentation is uh, uh, added both in the cervical and also in the cervical thoracic uh, area so that uh, you can uh, restore the stability, restore the biomechanic, and restore the uh, um, uh, sort of a healthy situation in uh, face of uh, debris mine, bone grafting, et cetera. And that uh, with the mechanics there addressed well, and then the healing will take place uh, um, quickly. Tariq, so this is Jens, I'm in Prague. I may have missed it in the beginning. I'm at the uh, uh, Global Spine Congress here. So when do we know that the TB infection is under control? Did I hear you right that you get serial MRIs? And... Uh, uh, and it was hardware that gets a little bit problematic. Are there any lab parameters? How do you know that TB is under control? Uh, I think um, the, the patient uh, clinically will be improved with um, a lot of, uh, you know, weight gain, his uh, systemic uh, you know, symptom they are abated, his appetite is improving, and uh, his paraxia and all, all those, uh, you know, Parameters of uh, clinical parameters of tuberculosis infection, they start abating and the patient gains weight and uh, neurological recovery occurs. You can take the um, uh, sort of um, uh, axis, uh, you can take the CT scan, but MRI is not always uh, very good uh, in uh, telling us uh, the progression of disease because once the signal change occurs in the early process of um, you know, disease process, they do not uh, show much difference in the change in signal in the, in the way of uh, assessment of progression. So if you have to do it, whether the infection is still there or not, then PET scan probably will give you much more information uh, as compared to MRI. So I think clinical, radiological, both will tell you of, along with the uh, sort of uh, seed active protein and uh, lymphocyte count and these sort of things, they tell you the serial like the, you know, evaluation that disease is getting under control or not. This is uh, Izzy Lieberman again from Texas Back. Uh, I just wanted to hear your impression. Uh, when I see cervical subaxial TB versus thor thoracic or thoracal lumbar, it seems that the neurologic deficit and the potential for recovery is much less predictable in the cervical than in thoracic and thoracal lumbar. Is that your experience as well? I think uh, I agree with you because uh, the higher the uh, level of um, insert is to the neurological tissue, the more it will time it will take take time to uh, to to recover. And the second is uh, if you have a kyphotic deformation um, there in the cervical spine, it will acutely angulate the uh, cord and it will uh, not only um, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, impair its uh, vascular supply, but also it will um, uh, sort of uh, interfere into the uh, CSF flow and the nutritional uh, status of the cord. So I think uh, the, if you have a kyphotic deformity, whether it's an acute setup or if it's a heel setup, it will induce not only biological, but also um, mechanical um, factors uh, which will be played into the scenario and it will uh, produce um, a local um, vascular flow, local CSF flow, and mechanical pressure, also the discastrum, all the uh, um, healed uh, bony tissue in the canal. So they, they all play their part. And uh, I agree with you, it takes, if the neurological um, uh, uh, damage occurs, it takes longer time. But I tell you, in tuberculosis, neurological damage, one should correct the uh, kyphosis or deformity as long as possible, as far as possible. They will recover. Um, as compared to recover to larger extent as compared to other pathologies. I mean, this is my experience. I have done quite a few uh, in um, uh, in cervical and the upper uh, cervical spine. They recover. If there's a, if you think it's a tuberculosis, go ahead and do surgeries, restore the biomechanics, restore the alignment, and, and continue with anti tuberculous treatment. By and large, uh, it will recover in most of the patients. Yeah, I've, I've always been amazed at the extent of the neurologic recovery, considering yeah. the presenting symptoms. They, they come essentially uh, very paraparetic. They, they can't walk, move, but a few days, weeks later, you already see quite dramatic improvement. But the cervical ones don't seem to improve as well or as much or as quickly in what I've experienced. But it's an interesting disease. 
it's a very interesting disease. In few I've, cases, uh, uh, what in few cases, what I have seen that earlier that you pick the disease, the more good is the outcome. Uh, and the late you are finding the disease process or diagnosing the condition after the once the patient is being diagnosed at uh, after the interval of four to six weeks, there are least chances that he will improve over the time or the uh, there are probably if he, even if he improves, the, the, whether he will be in the falling in the frank scoring C or D. Uh, it, it's uh, almost and another factor is uh, the age of the patient uh, when he presents uh, with the disease process. The younger the patient and early on the diagnosis is the better is the outcome, whether it is in the cervical region, thoracic or the lumbar, lower lumbar region. So the main, th these two are the, uh, all the time, uh, what we have, uh, what we've seen that the earlier that you pick the disease process and the total, the debrima you have, how the debrima you have done and how much soft tissue, uh, how you handle the soft tissue while performing the cases. Uh, it, it's not uh, the, that, that you have to clearly divide each and every tissue, but you have to respect the uh, vascularity as well. Uh, though, so uh, all factors, they contribute to the healing process or to the neurological recovery. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mahmood. Uh, I think uh, we should uh, progress uh, and uh, we'll request uh, Dr. Mahmood to present uh, his case and uh, review the literature. I would request to, uh, because of the shortage of time, to be as uh, quick and as smart as possible. Dr. Mahmood, you're still muted. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm Dr. Mahmood and uh, I'm present here the topic lumbar cycle junctional tuberculosis. Uh, next slide. We're still having trouble hearing you. Mahmood, you carry on. Uh, can you, uh, the, whether the screen is being shared? Yes. Yeah, we can see your screen and we can hear you. It's not working. Yeah, we can see you and hear you both. So go ahead. Okay. Carry on. The topic. The topic I am okay. raising here the uh, the outcome clinical outcome medium term follow the patients with a posterior only approach uh, of the lumbar pelvic fixation and lumbar cycle for the management of the lumbar sacral junctional tuberculosis. This study has been uh, done by the Jan Shaoju and Jan Jan at the uh, Shanghai, China. The rationale of the study is to elucidate the clinical features and introduction of the surgical procedure of the lumbar sacral junctional tuberculosis along with the feasibility and the safety of the posterior approach and assessment of the medium-term clinical outcomes along with the efficacy of the surgical procedure for the infection, elimination, and re re regaining the lumbar sacral stability. The, uh, globally, the tuberculosis reports, uh, the global re tuberculosis report revealed that uh, WHO in 2018 that 10 million new cases of tuberculosis worldwide in the era of 2018. And spinal tuberculosis, particle of the lumbar sacral junction, it accounts for the two, two to three percent of the total number of the tuberculosis, spinal tuberculosis cases. And lumbar sacral junction uh, foundation is the foundation of the spine and making 80 percent of the lumbar lordosis and lumbar pelvic angle having the pivotal role in the sagittal balance. And uh, more than that, global spine balance have been overemphasized from the last few years and to restore the normal spine alignment and prevent the late onset neurological damage and early ambulation and radical debridement along with the chemotherapy have been advocated in the literature. The surgical intervention, it promotes the acuteness of the abscess area and clearance of the ligand and bone grafting and internal fixation and early stability and, uh, and stabilization and mobilization of the patient. And clinically, it's helpful in the infection elimination is as well. The, the, in the past, with the anterior combined anterior, posterior, and posterior only approach have been used, but routinely what we use is the posterior only approach right now, and the, this is the, uh, the, it's the study which have been published right now. 
The what the surgical method have been used in the study is the prone positioning the patient and then the posterior midline incision where pedicle uh, stabilization with the pedicle circuits and debrema, a thorough debrema and decompression and installation of the rods and bone graft and the cage placement. And uh, intraoperative bleeding, uh, these, these are the outcome by years of the 138 patients. Uh, the intraoperative bleed was 400 to 1 liter and VAS score. Uh, it has been improved of the period of two months uh, uh, pre and post. It has good improvement with a good uh, good improvement in the ODI scores, uh, 44 in, in the pre-op versus uh, 9 in the post-op. And operative time was 2 to 3 hours with the lumbosacral and lumbopelvic angles were well preserved. And the bony fusion um, uh, uh, was confirmed by the modified leak criteria, uh, which was quite good as well. And uh, this is a posterior approach. It is less invasive, a wide damage to the vital nerves and blood vessels, early rehabilitation of the patient as compared to the lateral or the anterior approaches and uh, better construct of the, uh, by the pedicle circuits and uh, approach provides better exposure of the anterior part of the spinal canal and posterior decompression as well. And uh, post internal fixation, uh, keep instrumentation away from the, uh, from the tuberculous focus and conducive to the healing process of the Deep tuberculosis. And uh, the, the medium term clinical outcomes of the five years show that no cases of the tuberculosis recurrence, uh, complete resolution of the infection at the last follow up, and preoperative neurological deficit had satisfactorily recovered. And there was vast improvement uh, by the 80, in, in 80%, and there was good bone fusion with no implant failure in the cases. So there are certain cases which have been operated at our center by my own self. Uh, this is 37 years old lady which presented with the uh, low back pain and there was progressive deterioration of the neurology and patient was on ATT for the three weeks, the, but the symptoms were not improving. Uh, the X-rays revealed that there, there was a decreased disc space at the level of L45 with the vacuum phenomena as well. MRI revealing the uh, tuberculoma or the uh, showing the uh, altered signals and patient was uh, operated. Uh, it, it was operated by the posterior only approach. One single state debrima was done and pedical circuit fixation with the L3 to S1 with the soft e lift. As the bone was extremely osteoporotic, we, uh, we were uh, not going for the mesh cage in, such, in this case. This is the uh, same case uh, showing the at the follow. Uh, you can see here that there is bony fusion at the level of, of the uh, tuberculoma site or the spondylodiscitis site. And the tuberculosis has been healed up. Uh, patient uh, met me almost in the in my last follow-up OPD and he was fully mobilized performing his daily activities, routine life. And uh, the, But in, in such cases, the ATT is never, uh, never ever a simple case with the TB spine. Uh, in, in the patients on the, who are on the chemotherapy, we uh, met many, many challenges. And in such cases, we keep infectious disease specialists and MDR TB specialists along with us while the patient is on the follow-up. And the second case of 70 years old, uh, it was male uh, with a thin Clemency skin, emaciated look. Uh, he was with the weakness of the both lower limbs, unable to walk. Uh, his ATT had been started empirically, and the patient was on presentation with the frankel grade T. Uh, in, in this case, there was the, you can uh, appreciate that there is destruction of the sacrum, involvement of the sacrum and L5 vertebra as well. Uh, and in the previous slide, you can ap uh, appreciate that in, uh, that the bone was very, very thin and it was so osteoporotic that we were even uh, while putting the circuit, I was very much scared that how the bone will behave and how the implant will behave in the post period. So in this case, uh, 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 I uh, again did the posterior only approach, one single stage deployment with the and uh, the, the porcelain or the other uh, necrotic material was removed and L4 to S1 fixation was done along with the soft T leaf was done. Uh, this is the case uh, which have been operated. Uh, in this case, you can uh, appreciate that there is uh, the L L L L four circuits. They have migrated a bit upward, and L five was uh, migrated a bit down. This patient uh, presented in the late stage with the uh, there was. Uh, there was with the L5 nerve root involvement, there, there was loss of the uh, EHL, uh, EHL uh, was almost uh, the, there was toe drop, big toe drop, drop over the time. 
so uh, to me it was because of the sacu uh, might have caused certain damage to the uh, nerve over the time over the disease process as, as there was settling and it was impeding the nerve somewhat so but the west scroll improved neurology overall over neurology was improved improved and patient was <laughs> started walking independently and this is the last last case uh, this is 30 years old male uh, with the west scroll was patient was in extreme pain the att it was taking att from uh, two months where the conditions were not improving to that very extent uh, patient uh, was or was with a grade d on the presentation and uh, there <clears throat> here uh, you may appreciate that there the disease process is uh, confined to the l5 s1 disc and there was uh, uh, involvement of the inferior end plate uh, in this case and there is also the height is been reduced of the vertebral disc and there is plagmon is being you can appreciate right here in this case and uh, the, this patient percutaneous saw sepsis uh, was uh, drained two to three times saw sepsis developed one to two times and it was continuous abscess drain to three times and patient uh, pain relieved and neurology improved by six months. Uh, in this case, uh, you, this is the last uh, follow-up. On the last follow-up, you can appreciate that there is uh, well-compensated uh, lumbar lordosis along with the pelvo, lumbosacral angle and lumbopelvic alignment is all, uh, are, all are quite good. So uh, this is the, a conservative case, but in, in while uh, treating this conservative case, uh, the problem which I faced was a uh, recurrent source abscess, and I have to go for the recurrent aspiration, uh, ultrasound guided aspiration of this one. And also the, there was delay of, the, of this patient to the return to the activities or normal routine. Uh, so the, what is the conclusion that one stage posterior debrema along with the interbody fee and on lumbosacral and the lumbar pelvic fixation and postal drainage according to the severity of the sacral destruction is an effective and highly safe procedure to treat the lumbosacral junctional tuberculosis in the adults. So if we can manage then these cases conservatively if, if these had been picked early on, but in the cases where the presentation is the late and there is in extensive involvement of the vertebral bodies, then in, this, in such cases, we have to go for the mesh cage or cage placement and the debridement, thorough debridement and other things as needed in the lumbar junction. But there are dramatic results if the disease process is picked early on. Uh, in, in such cases, uh, we have seen that Frankel C uh, improved within uh, two weeks and within one week. Patient was again on the feed, patient own presentation, it was great the Frankel score C, but after the debridement, after one week, patient developed, patient is with a normal neurology and started walking again. So one stage posterior debrima, interbody fusion, uh, it's a really effective and highly safe procedure to, to treat thoracolumbar or the lumbosacral junctional tuberculosis. But what challenges we, uh, we have in such cases that most of the patients of the tuberculosis, they are, they are malnourished. Uh, they have poor uh, uh, poor bone stock, they have uh, poor healing capacity and uh, in such cases there is delayed wood healing, extremely osteoporotic bone, their bone is so flimsy and so thin that uh, we, are, we are very much scared at after how the implant will behave. And there is in, implant impingement in the uh, lumbopalmic fixation and titanium mesh related issues in the osteoporotic patients. Uh, which halt us to use them in the cases of the extremely osteoporotic patients. Mahmood. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Mahmood, this is Jens Chapman. So um, uh, uh, thank you for sharing all this. Um, I really liked your uh, approaches and that article is a very good one. I'm just a little bit surprised that you did not go to the pelvis with your fixation, uh, especially as you stated that these patients are osteoporotic. I'm not saying you did anything wrong because you actually certainly look right, but uh, we have so much twitch towards going to the pelvis when S1 is even remotely compromised. So, and I'm not sure of Izzy, uh, what Izzy sees and has seen in his practice in Uganda, for instance, but I'm just surprised that you didn't go to the pelvis. So maybe we can talk about that a little bit. I, I agree with you, uh, Jens. I think um, uh, in in the, all the scenario, uh, the, the one should have gone into the ilium because it provides a virgin bone, which is uh, good in... Uh, uh, health, uh, despite that uh, lumbosacral junction is uh, osteoporotic, and uh, in this situation, when the uh, sacrum is involved, even though it's not entirely where uh, disease uh, involved, it may be just osteoporotic, 
but I think Ilium, uh, the two anchors in the Ilium, they provide much better stable um, fixation uh, in which you can restore the uh, biomechanics, you can restore the low doses, and you can make sure that uh, the, the biomechanics is much more uh, sort of uh, patient friendly. Uh, I think uh, the chances of failure, they are much higher if you involve uh, sacrum and uh, you put your two screws in the sacrum because they will uh, tend to cut out, they will uh, sort of uh, collapse and they will develop subsequent uh, uh, secondary issues of um, osteoporosis and uh, along with the disease process, along with the fixation of you know, the uh, uh, compromised uh, vertebrae. I think yes, I sir. Uh, we can use S2 LR eyelid screws as well as well as the uh, eyelid screws. Uh, but the issue remains whether the how the cage will behave uh, after the thorough debridement, whether the uh, putting up the mesh cage in such cases, uh, what are the results? Uh, if any can share, please. Mahmood, if, uh, if you address the uh, situation of the lumbar pelvic junction in the right manner, uh, the cage will not subside and it will not uh, be sort of um, uh, cause any problem um, because cage is a titanium, is a good cage. You can uh, use along with the bone cap and etc. But uh, uh, if you, you have to have a stable uh, fixation uh, in the lumbosacral area uh, because you know any loss of fixation result into kyphotic deformation and once a kyphosis begins, either because of a disease process or because of a failure of fixation, it will lead to further aggravation of um, uh, deformity and further aggravation of uh, um, uh, sort of uh, implant failure. So we're almost out of time, so I have to just uh, ask for a very quick answer. Dr. Amin Hanin just wants to discuss. Great point, Dr. Hanin. Thanks for always following us. Um, why does it make sense in a cachectic patient to not just debride the abscess in the first procedure and then bring the patient back uh, in a couple of days or weeks when they're in nutrition a little bit better and then do a reconstruction? So why not split it up? Why do it all in once if you have a very compromised non-nurse post? Thank you. Thank you. I think it's a very right uh, observation and approach. Uh, I think in a poorly sick patient, uh, uh, one would stage it, do remove the abscess um, either through the minimal in, uh, invasive technique and uh, improve the uh, general condition by giving antibiotics and uh, increasing the nutrition status and go uh, in a second stage after uh, four to six weeks time and correct uh, whatever is required to be corrected. The current concept is the middle middle path to lease regime in which uh, ATT have been started for a period of three to two, three weeks prior to the surgery. And during this period, the uh, the nutrition status have been also been improved by giving the good proteinous diet. And after two to three weeks, they, they uh, we proceed for the surgery. In all the cases, we have uh, followed the middle path to lease regime. It's in, in the, our practice right now. Izzy, do you want to take us out? Do you want to do some concluding commentaries sure. and questions? Uh, thank you for that, Jens. And, and gentlemen in, in Pakistan, that uh, tremendous case is tremendous experience. Uh, TB is, is still a, a tremendous issue on our planet um, all around. We still do see a lot of it in North America, particularly in the Midwest with the various uh, isolated communities that are around and in, in particularly the Indian reservations. Uh, so it's, it's a problem. We have not addressed it adequately medically, and now we're just learning how to address it surgically. Uh, this is something that uh, I, I would say we as surgeons should be regarded as being are, are being more aggressive with it. When we see it, we should be taking care of it right away. So thank you all for that, and everybody enjoy the weekend. Thank you, Jens. Thank you, Isidore. Thank you, uh, Jack. And thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you, friends. And thank you, Angela, for hosting us and uh, organizing everything. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.